Chrome extension coding challenge number two. I'm also going in this coding challenge, I just made one that replaces images with kittens, if you didn't watch that already. You can also check out the Chrome extension tutorial playlist for a lot of background information. But in this video, I'm going to attempt to make a Chrome extension for any web page that you're on, like the P5.js library page, that I can like doodle over it. So, and I'm going to doodle over it with a P5.js sketch. So how do I do that? So one thing is, so I, I did already, um, the, one of the first things you need for a Chrome extension, if you've watched it in other videos, you already know this, is a manifest.json file. That is the configuration and all the information about your Chrome extension that you need. So this being just a content script, I want it to work on any URL. Um, um, and more likely, I probably want to do something where I press a button and then I can draw and maybe I get a pop-up with an interface to pick the color, but we'll get to all that later. <laughs> right now, I'm just going to do the simple thing that for any web page, I can suddenly draw on it. So I'm going to put all the code for drawing in sketch.js. And just to show you what I mean, like a simple, um, P5 sketch would be something like this, function setup, function draw, I'm going to say create canvas. Uh, I'm just going to just give some arbitrary size right now. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to like absolute position it so that it is over and I'm going to say clear. So I don't think I need to say clear, I think by definition it's clear so that it's a transparent canvas. And actually I'm not even going to do that. I just want to see the canvas on the page. So I'm going to say background zero. So, Here's the thing. Well, let me try running this extension. Let's see what happens. So I put, uh, I have this manifest.json. I have this sketch. Let's load the extension. Uh, let me close a bunch of this extra stuff. Uh, if you're wondering why everything appears to be an image of a kitten, it's because I'm still running my other uh, Chrome extension. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep that enabled. I'm going to load a new extension called, because uh, I can't turn off the kitten one, sketch. And so again, you need to be at Chrome slash slash extensions and you need to have developer mode on and you can find out more about this in some of my other tutorial videos. P5 sketch version 0.1 is now running. So let, I probably, I probably should turn this one off, but let's go to this web page now that I want to draw on, open up the Chrome console. I'm going to let this, give myself some more space here. I'm going to, so actually, <laughs> It's time. I've got to disable this because this extension is spitting out a lot of stuff in the console and I want to just look at the stuff for the P5 sketch. So I don't see anything. Like the extensions, I see nothing going on here. Well, let me at least say console.log sketch started. Sketch looping. I, I know why this isn't working, by the way, I'm being, I'm kind of like setting the stage here for what I want to talk about. And then I'm going to say console.log uh, sketch, blah. <laughs> okay, so let's reload this extension, reload, and I'm going to hit refresh, ah, sketch blah, but no setup and no draw. So here's the thing, well, a couple things, number one is, I didn't include the P5 libraries. I mean, I have them in there. I have sketch.js, p5.js, and p5dom.js. So I've got to at least in manifest.json reference those. So let's say, and I might not, uh, p5dom.js, and this should be double quotes. So I want all of these JavaScript libraries. So this is, by the way, how you can reference another JavaScript library in a Chrome extension. And I think there's a way to do this with a URL path. I'll have to come back to that another time. Um, <clears throat> so I can do that. Let's reload the extension. I'm going to laugh if this works, which it really shouldn't. I hit refresh. Ah, there we go. Oh, see that. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. It sort of did something. Whoa, it actually ran setup? Whoa, weird. So, um, interestingly enough, I'm kind of intrigued by this because there's a thing that I was about to explain, which is that I have to use something called instance mode, opening up. So I'm going to just, let's just, let's just humor me for a second. I'm going to take out this and let's just see what happens now. For some reason the DOM library didn't seem to work, but the other stuff did, which is weird. Let's run this again. Oh, weird. Oh, it's there. Oh, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. 
It just worked. That's so weird. But the DOM library stuff didn't work. Why? Does the order matter? Oh, maybe it's just that. Interesting. Something changed since the last time I tried this. This is going to be much easier than I thought. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to explain instance mode. Let's try putting the DOM library. I guess they, order, they load in these orders. Let's try this again. Reload. So now let me, um, let's try, sorry, let's go back to sketch and let's, uh, let's use the DOM library now. And once again, reload again and hit refresh. Yeah, look at that. Huh. Well, la di da. So amazingly, I can actually just put a P5 sketch in the content script. Maybe this is a bad idea for some reason. It, when I made an example for this last year, I had to use something called instance mode. And if you want to know what instance mode is, I will include a link to a video tutorial about that. I thought P5 does this thing where it, it for, to be beginner friendly, it allows you to declare setup and draw in the sort of global world of JavaScript. And for whatever reason, I thought that that didn't work in a content script and you had to kind of namespace things in the instance mode way. These terms might not mean anything to you. Um, but you can watch that instance mode video if you're kind of wondering about that. Let's keep going. So let's, 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 let's finish this off. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this out. I'm going to put uh, clear. Uh, in draw, I'm going to say a line from mouse x, mouse y to previous mouse x, previous mouse y. And I'm going to say stroke 0, stroke weight 4, and uh, uh, what else do I want to do? Ah, so this is the other thing. I probably want to make the canvas fill the page. So right now I'll just use window width and window height. So let's go back now and reload. Hey, where's my canvas? Let's see, do I have an error? Sketch blah. Now, uh, <laughs> all right, let's, let's see, uh, hmm, so how do I debug this? Hmm. Uh, let's not put, let's put a background here. Boy, what a pain to reload. Can I just, I can just do, ah, refresh, no. Um, okay, refresh. Okay, that worked, ooh, and it's there. Oh, oh, oh. Weird. Okay, hold on a second. So why didn't that work? First of all, I wanted to I want to say if mouse is pressed. Hmm. So it's working. That canvas is there. It's interesting how it's underneath some things, and I wonder if that's kind of the issue. So let's reload. Uh, reload again. Somebody in the chat, I'm sure, is telling me exactly what I'm doing wrong. And then, oh, oh, it works. I don't know why it didn't work before. Yay, OK. So I can do things like, oh, I love P5. And I'm going to make a little heart. So this is, this is just a very beginning step here. Now, here's the thing. Uh, there's some, some, some flaws here that I can give you. I'm going to scroll, and I can't. I can't draw down here anymore because that canvas is actually just a very, is, I said window width and window height. So I could do something like get the body height, I think, of the whole page to make the canvas over the whole page, but it could be a really long page. Another thing I could do is like move the canvas as I scroll. I could like just do the body height, but um, one of the things you might notice here is that I've really messed with your ability to click on links. Because the canvas is kind of stole is overlaid on top of everything, and it's stolen um, it's stolen a focus from all of the underlying stuff. So thank you to me, I am so me, and others in the chat who have given me some good advice about this. There are some CSS properties that I can try to add. So since I've got the P5 library loaded anyway, I can say C dot style. What was it? Pointer, in that it pointer events. Like this is a CSS property that will say like, hey, I don't want the canvas to receive any pointer events. So those pointer events will pass through underneath. Now, this might not totally work. Hit refresh. 
So now uh, I'm sort of able to get it, but like uh, it's working. But and you can see, yeah. So this is kind of and interestingly, you can see that the um, <laughs> the canvas is still there. That's because GitHub is actually not going to new pages. It's kind of refreshing within the same page. But um, if I really went to a new page, which like maybe I went to the GitHub homepage, yeah, it's gonna go away. Hello, there was a weird edit point there, but I discovered something while making this video tutorial. Look how nicely this is working. This is me on my Schiffman.net website, and I refresh the page, and it works nicely. It draws. I close the console. I refresh the page again. Oh, it's not working anymore. Oh, weird. It's sort of working. So, oh, it, now it's not working. Oh, no, it is working. So here's the thing. I think I got lucky. Remember earlier in this video, I started rambling about this thing called instance mode? Well, I think I got lucky in that the, okay, so a content script by definition executes after the page has loaded. But the page itself is not, does not include the P5 library. And the P5, these, these, I, I don't think the order of this really guarantees you much of anything. Could it? Could I put sketch.js first? Let's just try this. I really don't think so. I th P5, what it does, what the P5 library does is it looks for your setup and draw function. And it, that, that sketch.js file might not really like, the content script might not be available when it's like loading the P5 library and then it's not, like, not finding the setup and draw function and everything. So I might need to actually explicitly say like, hey, hello, P5, here's my setup and draw function, which I'm gonna show you how to do in a minute using something called instance mode unless this fixes the problem. But really, do you really think they load in that order in some way that's logical? But that doesn't make any sense because Sketch would have to come after. They can't load it first. Let's try. So I'm going to go to reload this extension. Reload. I'm going to hit refresh. Uh, not working. Oh, now it's not working at all. Oh, now it is working. It's the same thing. I think I'm getting lucky sometimes and not, because maybe I have things cached, things order, open to RAM order. Somebody much smarter than me will know the tech, but I, I think I really want this to work. <laughs> I'm, going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and do what I think will work, which is instance mode. So what is instance mode? I have a video tutorial about it. It's a way of namespacing everything in your P5 sketch and kind of wrapping it into a function. So what I'm going to do is I think I have to say, um, let's look, let's, let's go to, um, let's go to the P5JS wiki, because you might as well know about this page, which has a little tutorial about instance mode. And by the way, sometimes, oh, I'm like killing, okay, first of all, let's disable the extension. <laughs> And let's go to uh, instance mode. Uh, it's probably under I because I start global and instance mode. So this web page is going to explain this is global mode, everything living in the global namespace. This is instance mode. So I am going to just copy this over, and I'm gonna I'm gonna probably change this to using let instead of var and that sort of thing. But I'm basically going to take this out, and I'm gonna put my code in there. Uh, whoops. And what I'm going to do is put it in here and I'm going to say, uh, how did that work? I need to say sketch.setup equals function. I'll, I'll try to explain a little bit more about this. And uh, sketch.draw equals function. And then everything that's a P5 function, I just say sketch. Dot. So sketch.create canvas sketch.clear, sketch.stroke, sketch.stroke weight, if sketch.mouse is pressed, sketch.mouse x, sketch.mouse y, sketch.pmouse x, sketch.pmouse y, and then, um, this is fine. So this is just, now this is actually instantiating the P5 sketch. Um, I'm getting some more, uh, these are injected in the order they appear in the array. So from breaking news, from the Chrome extension API, this order actually does matter. They are injected in, into the script in the order that they're in the array. So let's do this. I think sketch.js should be last. And now what I'm going to do is, this should be exactly the same now. This is instance mode. It's the same exact sketch. 
But I've, so let me explain a little bit what's going on here. What I'm doing is I'm saying, I want to make, I, I want to make a new P5 thing. And so uh, normally this happens automatically. The P5 library starts to make its own P5 thing by looking for your global setup and draw. But here I'm saying, I'm going to make this wrapper function and it's going to have setup attached to it and draw attached to it. And this whole thing is the thing you can make the P5 sketch from. You know, a bit more to it than that. You can read the wiki page, but that's the basic idea. Let's see if this works. I'm sure I made some mistakes. Oh, window width. Is that a P5? Variable, so sketch.windowwidth, I think I'm going to have to say. Um, all right, let's see what happens here. So one thing I want to do, by the way, is I'm going to just change this to, um, I want to change this to sketch.window height again, just so, it's, um, just so it's only covering part of the page, because that really does slow it down if it tries to make a sketch, a canvas the size of the whole body. Um, all right, so let's now reload the extension. Oh, enable the extension, reload the extension, and refresh the page. And hold on, refresh the page. <laughs> Uncaught references, line is not defined. Oh, sketch.line, thank you very much. So it's very easy, it's kind of like forgetting this dot. <laughs> I gotta have sketch dot for everything that's P5. So I'm going to reload the extension again. I'm gonna come back here. Hit refresh. There we go. This works. Hit refresh again. It works. I'm going to get rid of the console. Ah, so now it's working consistently no matter what I do. Let's make one more thing a little nicer about this. Notice how I keep selecting the text by accident while I'm drawing. <laughs> Alka in the chat gave me some code to uh, do that. Ah, I see it now. I can change. Um, I can uh, affect the CSS of the entire body and set the user select property to none. So user select is a property meaning making something available to be selected. And so what I'm going to do here in setup is I'm going to say document.body.style, right, dot user select equals none. So, uh, and I kind of, I don't know why, but I have this like habit of doing this because a lot of the um, CSS properties are not valid keywords that you can just say dot like background dash color. You wouldn't be able to say style dot background dash color. But so you can user select would work because it's like a valid variable name. So let's try adding this. See if that's in the right place. I'm going to reload the extension, refresh. And now there I am drawing. It's not selecting the text. I can still click on the links. I can go over here. I can draw on here. And then I can also because I can also enable my Chrome kitten extension. I can go to this web page and I can draw, oh, I can draw, oops, I can draw, I can draw on the kittens. Yay, um, I love you, kitten. Oh, you're a star, kitten. Oh, rainbow, okay. Um, oh, are, are you still watching this video? Because I'm just gonna be here doodling on this web page for a while. Okay, so, I'm going to leave it here. Um, I did show you how you could actually create the canvas to be taller with document.body.clientheight. Um, one other suggestion from uh, Austin in the chat said I could start with no loop and only render when I'm actually drawing. That'll actually really help the performance as well. Of course, there was another suggestion being like, well, if you just used SVGs, you don't have this giant canvas. That's probably a much smarter idea. But the point is I'm showing you how you could have a Canvas overlay with P5 and load P5 um, uh, P5 uh, library. And by the way, you can load other libraries the same exact way, whether you want to use jQuery or 3JS or anything, it's the same exact way. So I hope you enjoyed this coding challenge about creating a Canvas overlay P5 sketch in a Chrome extension content script. If you made it through this whole video, thank you. Uh, something. Goodbye.